Oh, today is the first lab for module two. So it's a, it's a new lab, a new module. Good information, something that you're going to use probably throughout your healthcare career and even your life if you choose to change your pathway. When we're learning blood vessels, I've kind of changed the way that I do it um, lately to go over the blank images with you. I think it works a lot better to learn it on the blank than it does, let me show you, on a picture like this. Well, let me rephrase that. Depending upon the one, we'll use some blanks. But I also want to show you this for a reason. Um, we used to give a list of the blood vessels that you needed to know. And now, instead of giving you guys a list, what we did is we just edited the pictures. So anything that's in the picture is something that you need to know. So you don't have to have a separate list and go, oh, which ones do I need or which ones do I not need? So in the actual blood vessels lab, the ones with labels, if it's got a word there, those are blood vessels you need to know. Okay. Good morning. Oh, it's okay. So let's go back to this blank and let me get you started with an actual picture that doesn't have anything on it yet. This one right here. And what we're going to do first today is we're going to learn the differences between arteries and veins. That's where we're going to start. And we'll also see a picture of a capillary. And so I'm going to mark this up with you. This is actually a real picture. This happens to be an artery that was taken by using a microscope in this lab. So the first thing that you'll see here, or that I'll point out for you here, this is the lumen of the blood vessel. And as I mentioned, it's the artery. So in here is where blood would be. But most of that blood is actually red blood cells. Okay. So I may ask you, and usually I would have it zoomed up more. I'm going to show you the zoomed up picture. But if I want you to tell me what's in here, that would be mostly red blood cells. Okay. You'll see it zoomed up in just a bit. And if I ask you to name this space, just like we did before, that space is called the lumen. That space right there is the lumen. Good news for you guys, whether we're looking at an artery or a vein, arteries and veins are both tubes. And these tubes both have the same number of layers. Okay, and those layers have the same names. So the good news is, if you learn it once, you'll be able to use it twice. So let's start with this. First off, I think everybody can kind of see that there's a tissue out here that looks wavy that goes all the way around the outside. That's the outer layer of an artery, and it is called the tunica. external. So it's that layer right there, the tunica externa. It just so happens that the tunica externa, if we follow it over here, got to write that. What am I trying to tell you by putting CT there? That it's connective <laughs> tissue, that this is connective tissue. So the way that it'll go on test day is I'll show you this picture or the picture of A. I'll point to a layer. And I'll either ask you to name the layer or to tell me the tissue type. So you'll either name the layer or the tissue type. So over here, you'll see the name of the layers. And on the picture itself, 
I will do red tissues. Okay. The middle layer is probably the easiest. It's this nice pink layer right here. And I wouldn't expect you to know based on this picture what it is because you didn't spend a lot of time with these tissues in AMP1. So before we cover it, I wouldn't expect you to know it. But after we cover it, just the basic concept is blood vessels need to be able to change their size. You might remember from what we did earlier, they can constrict down and get narrow or they can open up and get bigger. That's called dilate. And we'll talk more about that in another chapter. But the only kind of tissue that can change its size, that can actively do that, is muscle. So anybody want to take a wild guess what kind of muscle you have in a blood vessel? Would it be skeletal? No. So you have two other choices, cardiac or smooth. It's smooth. Cardiac is only in the heart. So we won't be doing any cardiac muscle today. So all the muscle you see today will be smooth muscle. So this is smooth muscle. I'm going to abbreviate muscle MS, but that stands for muscle in this picture. Okay. So there's our smooth muscle. It is called, and its name makes sense, once we realize all of these layers are called tunica, so they use the same term for that. And the middle layer, they use media. So right there is the layer called the tunica media. The third layer is on the inside. It is that single line right there. That little purple line that's kind of wavy and goes all the way around. That's it. Because it is so thin and fine, they gave it a name that's supposed to tell you that it's delicate or thin. So they named this layer the tunica intima, the tunica intima. And once again, we see it here. I will show it to you on another zoomed up picture so you see it better. And I want to take a wild guess what that single thin layer is made of, what kind of tissue? I'll get you started. There you go. And what's the third word on that? So this layer is simple squamous epithelium. So here are the three layers of the artery. Out here, we have connective tissue. Right here, we have smooth muscle. And then this single little wavy line, that is simple squamous epithelium. In here, this is our lumen, and we have a bunch of red blood cells. Why don't we say blood in there? Because this is on a slide. It's been prepped and all the layers. So it's not just blood. It just left the cells there. Now, the reality is there's a couple of white blood cells in there and maybe a few platelets, but you really don't see them because there's a thousand times more red blood cells than most of those. Um, maybe that dot there and that dot there might be one, but I'm going to show you a better picture. So there's our first markup. Go ahead and take a picture with your phone and get that. I use this exact picture on the test. So you can expect to see this to be asked the layers or the tissue type there. So here's what it looks like zoomed up. Right here. Yes. Oh, you missed the picture? Okay. 
So on this one, you can see the simple squamous very well. It's right That is our simple squamous epithelium. And you guys want to remind me, what do we call or what do we name this layer? Just look at your picture. Tunica intima. There you go. That name, to be honest with you, I think the tunica intima's name is the hardest because we have externa. So you would think they would name this like it's internal, but they did not. They name it because it's so delicate. I-N-T-I-M-A. And which tissue type is it right there? Yes. Simple. Squamous. <clears throat> and this time, because of space, I'm just going to write epi. Okay. Simple squamous epithelium. Down here, just so you, you so you've seen it, this is where the smooth muscle begins. It's very close to that simple squamous. This is just the beginning of the smooth muscle. But the truth is, if I'm zoomed up this much, I'm not going to ask you that layer. I'm zooming up so you can see the simple squamous, and so you can see these. And so you can actually tell what those are. And what are those? Yes. Those are red blood cells. And what is the name of this space all through here? Very good. Mm. And so that finishes up marking up our artery, this time zoomed up. And it just so happens that our artery picture was better zoom than the vein picture. So the only zoomed picture I have for you is the other one. Okay. Now the vein, it's real easy to tell an artery from a vein. And here's how. Look at this. The lumen is very narrow and it doesn't hold its shape or doesn't hold its shape. Now, the lumen of a vein is not narrow. It's just narrow in the picture because veins are so thin that when they put them on a slide or when they take the blood out of them, they collapse because they're so thin. And the artery, even when they cut it open, it holds its shape. So the, your first real level of knowledge is you'll see that picture or this picture on the test. And I'll just ask you, what kind of blood vessel is it? What kind of vessel is this one? Artery. And how about this one? That's a vein. So let's go ahead and put that's a vein right there. Right here. About there to somewhere in there. That is our connective tissue layer. And I guess I could actually stick with the other and I could put the tissue over here. So I could even go and just put it right there. And this is the outermost layer. So we're going to name it. What was the name for the outermost layer? It was tunica externa. Here. Is this smooth muscle? It's very thin right there. And so that layer, what are we going to call that layer? Tunica media. 
And the innermost layer is just that little line right there. You can also see it right there. Just a very thin wavy line that goes all the way around. Lining. I like to put this here too. See if I can. Lining the loom. And that's our tunica intima. And who can remind me what tissue is seen there? Simple. Epithelium. And that's it on the vein. That's the same three layers. So after you study this just a little, it becomes pretty easy. But this is the first time we've done a tube that has layers, and we've actually had to really name those layers. So that's it for that picture. Go ahead and get a screen cap of that one. And now you've got the vein. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to show you the picture of a drawing of arteries and veins. And I'm going to add just a little bit to it. So here's the picture of on this side an artery and on that side a vein. Now, keep in mind, they both have the same three layers, the same three layers. Anybody know what these are supposed to be? There you go. I would draw it like this. There you go. So these are capillaries. So the first thing about this is this is a good picture because it shows you in the body, Capillaries form groups. They form groups, these big old networks of lots of capillaries. It's not usually one capillary like I draw. I draw one capillary just because I it saves time and I don't want to make the picture messy, so I always draw one. But capillaries usually form networks like this. And anybody want to remind me what kind of tissue is the capillary? Simple squamous epithelium, just like the inner lining of both the artery and the vein. Okay, so watch what we'll do here. With this picture, we'll just go tunica ext and show you it right there. And it's right there. And then I'll go. Tunica media, and it is right there, and it is right there. And so here, the tunica intima on this side. What I want you to see with the vein is this. Here's a simple squamous right there. Notice this thing right here. And I'll draw one in here just for fun. Those are valves, little valves. And valves make sure your blood goes one way, the way it's supposed to go. And so the blood on this could only go up. 
Here's why. If your blood tried to push backwards, if it tried to push that away, it would hit the flap, it would expand the flap to there, and that flap to there, and it would close it off. So valves let the blood, like we see here, move one direction, and it pushes them open, and the blood that it's supposed to go. These vessels over here, those are the only ones with valves. So who wants to tell me which kind of blood vessels have valves? Veins, only veins. Arteries will never have a valve. Capillaries will never have a valve. Only veins have valves. And what is their job? To make sure what goes one way? Blood. That's it. To make sure the blood flow goes one direction. Now, just like every single one of our classes, the lecture, or almost every single one, every class that has a lab, the lecture will go more in depth on this. The lecture will talk more about how the valves help direct one way flow and why they're so important. For the lab, I just want you to know it has valves. And that valve is part of which layer? Could you tell? You're right. The valve is part of the tunica intima. It's that simple squamous. It comes off and it folds and it forms a valve, which is pretty neat. And notice we don't see any valves over here. Let's not use that. Let's go. Okay, one thing to know about the artery. The artery has thicker muscle than the vein. And once again, this is just a drawing, but even in their drawing, they made sure you could see that the muscle layer across here is thicker. And also, right over here, they put two little layers that kind of look like cheese. I would say Swiss cheese, but they made it yellow. But it looks like cheese, how they have little holes in it. It is certainly not cheese. Over here, you can see the layers right there and right there. And notice if we go over here, we don't see a layer on each side of the muscle. So right here, we see a little layer on each side of the muscle. On the lab, I'm not going to ask you to name that layer, but because the artery has thicker muscle and it has that layer that is made, which you should know this, that layer is made from elastic tissue. And elastic tissue can stretch real easily. Okay. This gives, this gives our arteries to stretch. But because it's elastic, when they stretch, when the blood moves further on, it's going to snap right back. Or it's going to do what we say. And I'll talk more about this in our lab on Wednesday. In our lab on Wednesday, I'll talk about what we mean by recoil. And I'll get real particular about that. Today, I just want to introduce the concept that Arteries are elastic. It gives them the ability to stretch, but also to snap back. Nice, real nice. And so, because arteries have both thick muscle and tissue, remember that they hold their shape. Right? They stay round. We saw that in our picture of the real blood vessel. The artery was round, but the vein collapsed. And that's the reason, because the artery has both thicker muscle and extra elastic tissue that is not over there in the vein. Okay. Now, keep in mind, I could use this picture to ask you what tissue types they are. 
even though I didn't write it there. But so let's go ahead and write it there just so you have it on this picture. What tissue type is the tunica externa? Connected tissue. How about the tunica media? Muscle. And how about the tunica intima? There you go. Simple squamous epithelium. Okay, simple squamous epithelium. I didn't give you everything on the picture, but I gave you enough and all the important stuff. So go ahead and take this picture as well, because with that drawing, I think that drawing helps to integrate your knowledge a little, a little better. Also, if you're looking at this PowerPoint on your own computer and studying, you can zoom up. And you can really see how that is simple squamous epithelium, one thin layer. Okay. All right, everybody got that one? Artery or vein? Why? Holds its shape. It's round. It's round, it holds its shape. Artery or vein? Vein. Why? It's collapsed. Why is it collapsed? Doesn't have the elastic tissue. Good. And the muscle is thin. Look at how thin. Try to use this right here. Look at how thin that layer is right there. It's real thin. So you can see that. What layer is this? Okay, so let me ask it like I would ask the test question. Okay, name that layer. Tunica externa. What tissue type is it? There you go. And so that way it won't be confusing on the test. I'll either ask you to name it or what tissue type it is. Sometimes when we're just talking and I say, what is that? You know, the more than one answer would be there. But I wouldn't do it like that on test day. All right, so the next thing we'll do then is we will start naming the arteries. And I don't, even though we have these pictures in order, and this is from the blank, I always like to start on this picture right here. This picture of the chest right there. And the reason that we start here is because one, we can see more of what we need to see. And two, we see the aorta right here. So I'm gonna start by zooming it up, way up. So you see a little better of just right here. And so we'll start labeling some of the blood vessels right here. Today, the arteries are going to be red. So today, everything we do that's red is an artery. Okay? Next time, I'll give you more information about that. But for right now, these arteries that we see, they're all red. And maybe you know this, but maybe you don't. They're red because they contain... blood that is fully oxygenated okay and blood that has a lot of oxygen in it is fully oxygenated it's a nice bright red so they use that for our arteries okay. i always like to start here and i will come in and maybe sometimes i'll draw the blood vessel so you can see it a little better because this is a great picture but it's hard because they put bones on there. They wanted you to see it was in the chest. They wanted you to see it was behind the sternum and the collarbone comes in here. But the thing is, it makes it blurry for you, so it's hard to see. So I just like to usually do this, highlight it a little, and sometimes just 
just come in and mark it up. So you can see where it is and what it would look like. So this is the largest blood vessel in the body, this blood vessel right here. And I'm just going to go ahead and write its name in white right there. A O R T A. That is your aorta. You could call that the aortic arch, but I am just fine with you calling that part of it the aorta if, if I point at it. Okay? Your heart, there would be another chamber, would be right about in there. And it would come over to this side. Okay, so your heart would be in there. And so that aorta comes off of the heart. We'll talk more about that next time. And blood is leaving the heart and going right up in there. And then it's going to do this. It's going to go up, and it's going to turn the corner here, and then it's going to come down, and go down there. So that is the main blood vessel that leaves the heart. That is your largest blood vessel in your body. That is your most important blood vessel, your aorta. If that blood vessel is completely blocked, which it's, it's too big, it's never going to get completely blocked, you would get a blockage in another little vessel. But if that were completely blocked, no blood would leave your heart to go anywhere in your body, okay, except your lungs. And once again, we'll talk about that next time. Off of the top of the aorta, we have three blood vessels. One of them comes off right here, and it's that's the reason that I draw this in is because of how their picture is right there. So it's a little short blood vessel. What happens to that blood vessel right here? Can you tell? Oh, it splits or branches. Good. There you go. It branches into two. Or it changes, it becomes two. So here's kind of how they do blood vessels. They give a blood vessel a name, and then when it branches, they rename it. So this one right here has a name, and then at the split, they rename it. Okay. This one over here has its own name. which is going to be the same as this one after the split. Because see, they're in the same place. Okay, This one here is its own blood vessel. It came off of the aorta by itself. It was hidden behind this one a little bit, but I'm making it separate just because I want you to see it. And this one here is going to have the same name as this one right here. This other one after the split. And the reason is, is they're in the same location. We're going to call this number one, and that number two, and that number three. Because they go off in order. So let me ask you this very simple question. How many arteries branch off of your aortic arch? Three. Three. Three of them. Number one. Brachio. Yes, cephalic, and since it's this little box right here that is going to split into two others, they chose to call it a trunk. That is its name. So number one, that little vessel, is the brachiocephalic trunk. 
Who remembers what brachium means from AMP1? Yeah, your upper arm. So it's telling you, oh, it's going to go to the upper arm. Well, not first. First, it's going to go here, and then it's going to come down here, and eventually it's going to go to the upper arm right here. Okay? And it's also going this way. Where is that going? So let's just say head right now. Yes, it goes to the brain, but it's going to your head. Okay? And your brain and other things that are up there. So this here, two, is just like this here, okay? They're going up through the neck toward the head. Common carotid arteries. Which side of the body is this? The person's looking at you. That's the right. Very good. That's the right side of the body. I'm just going to let you know. You do not have to put left and right on the test. Okay. For most of the blood vessels, left and right are simple. So you don't need to put that. This person's looking at you, it's from the front. So this is the right common carotid. And what would this be? Yeah. Left common carotid. Okay. Right and left, right there. Number three. Number three curves. What's this bone here? Yeah, that collarbone is called a clavicle. So look what they call number three. Subclavian artery. Yes, there are two number threes. Here's number three on this side, right? Started, it's number three right there, and it's number three all the way to about somewhere right in here. The exact border for us doesn't matter right now because I will always label these in a good location where it is not confusing with the end of that vessel. You will always see it in a nice, good part of the vessel. Subclavian continues, and as it gets out here, now it's in the arm. So anybody want to tell me, what do you think would be a great name for the blood vessel of the upper arm? Brachial. I'm just going to start putting A. When I put A, what does that stand for? Artery. Artery. Very important to understand on testing. By the way, this is the only lab that's like an AMP1 lab. Most of the, like at first, I did all the tissue layers and everything. All the rest of the lab is just named the vessels. So I'm just going through this with you right now to help make mental connections so that you don't have to spend as much time outside of class learning these names. But this is our one lab that's a lot of memorizing names. We actually have two labs we're going to do on the heart. We'll do a heart lab Wednesday, and then we'll do a heart lab next Monday. There's more heart information, but there's a lot more blood vessels. Okay, there's more concepts with the heart. I should say it like that. There's more concepts with the heart, but there's a lot more structures with the blood vessels. So I want you to know. Your second lab test, half of it is today. Half of your next lab test is just knowing the names of the blood vessels and the difference between the arteries and veins and the tissues. That'll be half of your test. The reason we do this lab first, because actually when we had a textbook, this lab actually comes after all the heart stuff. We do this now because we're teaching in eight weeks. We're going to have this test in two weeks. We have two full weeks to work with these names, or almost two full weeks. You have two weeks to learn these names. I, I want to help you understand that once again, just like so many things in AMP, you can't guess these names if you don't know the terms, right? You'll say, oh, that's the arm artery, 
I knew it was red. I knew it was artery. That's the arm artery. That's the neck artery. You don't get credit for saying that. Okay. You gotta get the names right. So take the time starting this week, start reviewing your pictures and locking these names in. Okay, yes. Uh huh. Um, I think um, that's the first one you did. Right? Yeah, the little number one. So it's coming right before the uh, the right common carotid artery, and and the uh, right subclavian artery. Perfect. Perfect. The brachiocephalic trunk. Everybody see the white number one up there. That is the artery that will split and become, on the right side, the common carotid going up the neck and the subclavian going out to the right arm. Okay. So this, one of the, this, we spend more time on this part of this picture than any other picture. And here's why. It's the very first that we're doing, and it's also our rule breaker. Everywhere else in the body, the left and right look almost identical. Okay. There's not going to be a difference. The only location where there's a real, well, there's a little different in the gut, but by the time we get there, it's not too hard. Right here is the biggest difference in the body where we come off the aorta. We have one blood vessel that goes to the right, and we have two blood vessels that go to the left. The cool thing is these two that go to the left, number two and three, those are the same as these branches really wanted to use white there that come off of the right it just so happens that on this side there's no trunk they just come directly off of that aorta okay um, for full credit you also always have to tell me if it's an artery or a vein all right the, the reality is when people don't study all week and then they cram at the last minute they get on the test and they're like i don't remember if it's an artery or vein so they just put brachial you can only get partial credit if you put brachial. Brachial artery for the whole thing, okay? How about number one? What's the full name of number one? It's written up there. Brachiocephalic trunk. It is an artery, but this artery, artery is not part of its name. Its name is brachiocephalic trunk. We have a couple of arteries, and whenever they name them a trunk, <coughs> They don't put artery on it, but please note, they are still arteries. They're just called a trunk. I'm going to do that a couple times in the body, and we'll see one in the next one. The other thing is, after we get past right here, and we're going down, they said, ooh, that's not the arch of the aorta anymore, so we need to rename it. They still call it the aorta, but because blood is traveling down, they call it the descending aorta, okay? They renamed it descending aorta. Sometimes they will say, oh, it's in the chest, so it's the thoracic aorta, but they've named it the descending. Aorta is the most common. So go ahead and get your picture here. I'm going to zoom away so we see a lot more, and I'm going to mark it up again. But I wanted to really zoom up close and help you understand the blood vessels right there at the aorta. All right, anybody want to tell me what this one is? There you go. Common carotid. Common carotid. Common is part of its name. Okay. Common carotid, and is it an artery or vein? Artery. So it is a common carotid artery. Happens to be on the left, but once again, you don't have to put that on test day. Okay. What is this one right here? 
subclavian artery. And what is this one that's hidden behind the bone? Yes, brachiocephalic trunk, brachiocephalic trunk. And this right here? Aorta. And this part of the aorta? Descending aorta. Very good, very good. Some more generic information. Now we learned the layers of the artery, but something very important about arteries. They carry blood away from the heart. A for artery, A for away. That's what arteries do. They carry blood away from the heart, okay? So the so heart's up there. That means all the blood flow here is going that way, right? Here, going that way, that way, that way, that way. Started out going up there, turns the corner, and then travels down here. On these, it's all going outward. So it's always... It was leaving the heart, and it continues to leave the heart. Anybody want to tell me what that means about things? Very good. They will always carry blood toward the heart. Look, here's a cool little thing. So you could say into the heart, right? They're taking it back into the heart. Toward the heart's better, but veins, I write it like that. Artery away, vein, V-E-I-N. It's sending blood back into the heart. Why do we make veins blue in the pictures? Oops. I didn't read myself in that room. I had a curse for work. The blood in veins is deoxygenated. That means, this is pretty important, it's low. It still has oxygen. Actually, unless you're exercising, it still has a lot of oxygen. About 75% of the oxygen. That's not a test question. That's just me to help you. But right now, when you're sitting in class, the blood in your veins is probably about 75% oxygenated for most people. That's still low enough to change the content, and it changes the color. But the reality is, in your body, it's not really blue. It's usually a darker red. They use blue in all the pictures to help keep confusion away, all right? If they use two colors of red and somebody in class was colorblind like me, I would never see the two colors of red. So they use red for arteries because that's the reddest, the brightest. And they use blue for veins, not because it's blue, but because it's a different color of red, okay? Just, just understand that. And this part's so important. Deoxygenated just means low. It does not mean without. Okay. Well, actually, all of us, when we pass away, we're still going to have oxygen in our veins. So you don't get all the oxygen out of your vein ever. There's still oxygen in that blood. So it's low O2. So here's a good, here's a good background picture to help you understand it. Oh, let me add one more word. The arteries and veins that we're doing today, where the arteries are red and the veins are darker red, so they use blue. These are all called the systemic blood vessels. That means our normal vessels and I don't feel the need to define it. It's just what we're doing today, the vessels that go to your body. Next time when we do the heart, I can explain what makes these different from the others. But for now, just know 
any of these that we do today, they're known as systemic vessels. They're your normal vessels, and the arteries look red and the veins look red. Okay. By the way, on your test, you will have color pictures. They will not be gray. Okay. Back in the day when we had 16 weeks, sometimes we would have a picture that was just grayscale because they had a whole month to learn the blood vessels. They learned them on a deeper level. They could tell just by what was there, whether it was an artery or vein. Like anything in this picture, because that aorta looks like a candy cane, everything here's an artery. So it didn't have to be red. We don't have as much time to process the information. So I assure you, every picture on blood vessels will be in color. Okay. If it's red, what kind of vessel is it? Artery. artery, right? Artery. Okay. You have to write it. If you leave it off, you lose points. If it's blue, what is it? A vein. With the exceptions, just note, if you're not going to be here next time, you have to watch the video because there are a couple of arteries in the body that are the wrong color. There's a couple of veins in the body that are the wrong color. Next time I'm going to explain that. But it's none of the ones we see today. Today, they're all systemic. They're all normal. They're going to be the color you expect them to be. Okay. All right. So now back to the labeling of these. Bless you. go ahead and so now that I got us started on that I think we can go over to the one with labels and just make it a little bit easier for this one let me zoom up a little I'll tell you where to get a picture and when it's appropriate oh, that works perfect right there okay so we did these up here what are these two called common carotid arteries good what are this one and this one called subclavian arteries Look at this. See all these little branches? We're not doing them. Don't let it freak you out. See these others that are all crawling down here? We're not doing them. Don't let that confuse you. We're only doing the major ones. So the other ones we're doing on this page are all seen right here. What about right here, once this gets out way out into the arm, it gets a new name. But what I didn't tell you is that in here, when it's in the area of the shoulder blade, right in there, it has a third, it has another name. So before the subclavian gets out in the arm and is the brachial, it goes through a little short period where it's called the axillary artery. Where would the axillary basically be on your body? And why are they calling it this? Ah, that's it. Axillary means armpit. So if you take your hand, put it up there in your armpit, if it was way up in there, it would be the axillary. Okay, way up high up in there. And then once it gets, once it gets out past here, brachial. Okay. Notice what happens to the brachial. At the elbow, it splits. So they give them a new name. The one on the outside that goes to the thumb, is radial. Radial always is go to go to the thumb side. Okay. And the one on the inside is called the ulna. So it goes to the pinky, but we already wrote the other one goes to the thumb, so we don't have to write that. We don't need two memory devices. That means all these little other ones we're not doing. We're doing the big ones, okay? That's it. There are so many. Look at how many. Actually, Dr. Morris edited these for you. Look at how many he went in and removed, right? Because we just want you to have a basic, solid understanding. We had to draw a diaphragm in here because they didn't separate the abdominal cavity from, and it's really not in a perfect location. It should really be a little lower. But anyway. Once this blood vessel goes through there, 
Up here, we called it descending aorta. You guys remember that? As it goes under, we're now going to call it the abdominal aorta. Once the aorta goes through the diaphragm, it leaves your chest, and now it's in the abdomen. We call it the abdominal aorta. The abdominal. What are these little blood vessels going between? Between the ribs. Yeah, between the ribs. And they are on the back side, but we don't need you to know that part of it. Word for rib. Cartilage is costal. Cartilage, costal refers to the ribs. They're between the ribs. So all of these little ones coming down between the ribs here, all of them. We just simply call the intercostal arteries. We're not going to ask you the intercostals on the anterior side. They are there over here. You can see them on the front of the ribs. We're only going to do those over there. Though. That's it for this picture. So go ahead. And I think you can see how it's just going to take a little time. Practice writing the names. I would practice probably labeling on the blank. Come back over to this to see where they are. And just try to lock these in. So it took us quite a while. I mean, we've been in here. Wow, we've been in here a while. We did arteries and veins. And then we did this first picture going to start moving a little faster now because we have the concept. Arteries branch and they get a new name. Arteries carry blood which way? Arteries? Arteries? A for artery? Away. Away, right? Arteries carry blood away from the heart. And that's why I keep repeating and asking questions. I want to help you guys lock it in. Now we're going to go up to the head and the neck. We're going to see a little bit of what we've already seen, along with some new stuff. I'm always surprised whenever I look at this. By the way, that label is not going to this. It's going back over to there, to that little thing. What would this big blood vessel be right here? Mm -hmm. That would be your aorta. They don't even label it. I, I, I'm really shocked it hasn't been labeled. The aorta, we should know in every single picture. This person is facing that way. So this person is turned like I am. We're seeing it from the side. So it's hard to view some of these. We're only seeing the right side of the body. So they've drawn all of these on the right side. If we looked at the left, it would look kind of similar, but a little different. But this is just the right. So you guys tell me, what was the one that came out of the abdominal Sorry, of the aorta right there, the aortic arch. There it is. Brachiocephalic trunk. And then that brachiocephalic trunk does what? It splits and goes here. What is the one out here? And what is the one that travels up right there? Common carotid. Common carotid. Remember, always put artery. I know we're saying them without artery. On test day, always put the name of the artery or the name artery with it. And so what you can see is on this bottom portion, all of that's pretty clear. But right here, depending upon where you're sitting, 
you may not be able to see up in here. So here's what I want you to do. I want you to get a picture of this, and then I'm going to clear it, and we're going to zoom up to do the top, okay? Because I want to make sure everybody sees that very well. So you see a bunch of branches right through here. We can ignore most of those. The only little one we want to focus on is this one. It's going through a little hole in the vertebra right there. And it's going all the way up. And then it goes to the skull. And it goes inside. It actually goes up in and it goes to the brain. So anywhere along this, that little one beside there, it's called the vertebral artery. They chose not to label it until right here where it sneaks out. But notice, what is this blood vessel that that vertebral came off of? That was the subclavian artery. Very good. The subclavian, it comes off. So because it's, I want to get everything on this picture, I'm going to scroll up like that so you see all the vessels so we can get a nice picture. Keep in mind, that vertebral is right there coming up. Okay. Here is why I zoomed it right here. Common carotid splits and one of them goes up and notice how it goes behind that. When it's zoomed, we can see that and it goes up in here toward the brain. So this bigger one here, it goes inside. So they call it the internal carotid. The one that looks a little smaller stays outside and goes up here, eventually goes up to the skull. But right through here, they call it the external carotid. So the internal goes within and the external stays on the outside. As the external gets up here on your skull, right here, you can actually feel a pulse in it. We'll talk about pulses later. They rename it. They call it the superficial temporal artery. Superficial is part of its name because it's just under the skin. There happen to be tons of blood vessels that are just under the skin, but they don't always name them that way. But this one they do. And then the only other one we're going to do here, Dr. Morris was kind and he took out most of these. It's the one that goes to the eye. And notice. Here's the internal carotid, and this is a branch off the internal, and then it goes to the eye. It's called ophthalmic. Notice that spelling of the ophthalmic, because it's a weird spelling. O-P-H-T-H. O-P-H-T-H. I always point that out, because I want to help you with the spelling. O-P-H-T-H. Ophthalmic artery. So these are the remaining arteries that we need to know kind of zoomed up there. I would suggest you go ahead and get a picture that has them at that zoom level because that's meant to make it a little easier to learn. Crazy thing is all these branches have names. There are people that know all of those branches. Probably for most of us, it's not important to know that much information. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to look up right up in here, zoomed up, and see the internal carotid and the vertebral. What happens to them as they get to the brain? So those vertebral arteries as they came in, that would be them right here. One on the left, one on the right comes up the neck through the vertebra, then they leave the vertebra and go toward the spinal cord. We'll call them the two vertebral arteries. Where they come together, hey, you may remember this from AMP1, that little thing right there, that's called the pons. But the two vertebrals come together on the pons and it travels up. The ending on this matters. Basilar. Basilar. Because we're going to have a vein called the basilic that's really close to this. So I, I box that in to help you know, oh, i got to get this locked in just like it is. So once again, we have the two vertebrals coming up. They join together instead of splitting. 
and it becomes the basilar artery. As soon as that basilar splits, notice how it makes a loop that basically goes around where the pituitary gland would be hanging out. We call all of the parts of that loop together the circle of Willis, okay? The circle of Willis. And there are two little, there's little communicating arteries. I'm not going to ask you those on the test. I'm going to ask you, what's the group name for all of these, that little circle? So it's the circle of Willis. Why is W for Willis capitalized? Because it's a name. It was named after a person, okay? If you would prefer, you can call it the cerebral arterial circle, but I honestly think circle of Willis is easier, and in healthcare, they still call it that. The only other thing you need on here are the internal carotids. Remember they came up the neck after the split and they went in towards the, toward the brain? They're just showing them right here, their little cut edges. So you're barely seeing them there. They've cut it so you could identify them. And so they wouldn't be in the way of all the others. Bless you. Notice I gave you a little information right here. The circle of Willis feeds the front two thirds of the brain. The way it's angled, it doesn't really look like that. The basilar artery feeds the posterior one third. So these are blood vessels that supply your brain. Very, very important. Yes, ma'am. Mm -hmm. Yeah, let me use a different color than the red. So I'll take that out of there. And I'll right there. So the one in white all the ones in white there are the circle of Willis. It's a lot of different blood vessels, okay, that come together to form that circle of Willis. They come from, the internal they come from both the basilar. See those back ones come from the basilar, those bottom ones right here. So this comes from the basilar, and then the internal carotid joins here, and it forms those. Okay. Okay, go ahead and get that if you didn't already. So we already did this picture. What do we call the main one here in the arm? Brachial. What do we call the one over here that goes to the thumb? Radial, the one underneath here. Oh, see how we say that? Underneath, ulnar. Yeah. What is it called right in here? Axillary. Now notice that's just the main one. Look, there's all these little branches. Please ignore those little branches. So it works like this. Brachiocephalic trunk, subclavian artery to about right there, axillary artery to about right there, brachial artery until exactly there, because we see a split, radial, and what's this one? Ulnar, very good. What do we call it right here? Aorta, and what do we call it here? And what about once it goes under that? Abdominal aorta, there you go. Coming over here, But remember, you don't need posterior. If you put it, that's fine. But just intercostal arteries is how we want you to learn them. If you put posterior, it's okay. Remember in our picture that we took, though, I crossed out posterior on purpose. This is a rule breaker because it's not called an artery, even though it is. It's a very short one on the right only. What is its name? Brachiocephalic trunk very good these two have the same names 
as these two, but there is no trunk there. Okay. All right. Now let's come to the abdomen right here. Yes, sir. Yeah, yeah, sure. We're going to do now the major branches of the abdomen. These all branch off of, they all branch off of the main artery. I'm going to show it to you, and then I'm going to erase it so we can see. Here was our diaphragm. There is the abdominal aorta after it went through the diaphragm. All those little ones are branches off of this. Some of them are major branches. Some of them are minor. We're just going to do the five major branches that go to major organs. Okay? And they come off in order, which is great for us because we can number them one through five. All right? I'll use red. Number one. If you look here. It's the main stick that comes off right there. I think I'll use white. Because you see a lot of little branches, but there's one main one that those little ones come off of. Here's the good news for you. I'm not going to ask you the little branches. We're only going to ask one thing right there, and that's that little white one that I put. It's called the celiac. So we've never had that word before. So it's a brand new word. But it is a trunk. All trunks are what kind of vessels? Arteries. There's just a few arteries in the body they chose to call a trunk. Okay. So that little one right there, celiac trunk. Right here, this one in the middle that comes off right there, that is number two. Now, this one's hard because it's got a name that doesn't mean a thing to us yet. Uh, I mean, a lot of these do. Celiac doesn't mean a thing to us either. Superior, we understand. It means it comes off up high. But mesenteric, we won't learn until we get to the digestive system. I'll tell you just so you've heard it. There's a membrane in the guts called a mesenteric. And this blood vessel goes into that membrane. And it goes into the top of that membrane. So they say, oh, it's the superior vessel that goes into the mesentery. Let's call it the superior mesenteric artery. For us, you're just going to have to probably, I would take a blank sheet of paper and go one, two, three, four, five, and practice writing them. Number one, celiac trunk. Number two, superior mesenteric artery. Number three would be here. What organs that go into? Kidney. What's a great name for an or, uh, artery that goes to a kidney? Renal. Renal. There you go. Renal artery. You will notice that there's renal arteries on both sides. I'll ask you to label one or the other. Remember, I don't care. I'm not looking for left and right on this. I'm just looking that you get the right word. So up here, we have the first three. Celiac trunk. Superior mesenteric artery, and then the two paired renal arteries. Come down, and right here on each side, you get a little artery that splits and goes outward. From this picture, you cannot tell where that's going. If you're a girl, it's going to your ovaries. If you're a guy, it's going to your testes. What would be a great generalized name for one that's going to your ovaries or testes? Yeah, gonads, right? So gonadal. Check that out. The gonadal artery. One on each side. By the way, it's kind of messy. There's a lot of pointers here. All of these that go to the low back, they're 
call it lumbar because of the low back. We're not, we took it off. Notice we're not going to ask that. We're concerned with the ones going to the organs and the major organs. Okay, hey, what gland is this? Adrenal. So that would have that name, but we took it off. Okay, we're not trying to give you too much. We want you to know the main ones. All right, so we got one, two, three, four. Notice three and four were paired. One and two were singular. And so now we're already at the last one. The fifth one comes off right in the middle of the abdominal aorta, and it also goes to the mesentery. This one's lower, so they chose to call it the inferior mesenteric. Then the abdominal aorta splits, so we no longer have an aorta. You know what bones those are right there? Your hip bones. Those are your hip bones that I put those black marks on, on the side, way over here. So the hip bones are called the iliac crests, the crests of the ilium. So they decided that these two on either side should be called common iliac arteries. Based on what we know from common before in the neck, common carotid became what? One went in, one stayed out. Internal and external. So every time, here's a little rule to help you. If you have a common, after that, you're going to have two blood vessels named internal and external with the same base name. So let me show you, and then I'll, I'll get you to take your picture, and we'll do more. But right here, this common iliac on this side, external iliac on this side, going to be internal iliac right here and right here. I've got it down low, but I wanted this picture zoomed, so that's why you don't see that right now. Only other thing, right in the middle, coming off here, that's where your sacrum is. So that little blood vessel that goes down the sacrum, since it's right down the middle, they call it the median sacral artery. Oh, and oh yeah, the most important on here. Please note, on the real test, I can use a blank and draw my own lines, right? Anywhere. I'll do it again to help, help you remember this, and then I'll take it away. Anywhere here. What's that main blood vessel there? Very good. Abdominal aorta, right? We don't have to use that pointer. We can put our own in and point to that main blood vessel. So let's... Yes. Oh, the pancreas would be through here. Oh, yeah. The pancreas actually, yeah, is going to sit right there on top of that. So this, yeah, it's going to be right there. The pancreas is going to be right there by those uh, by those adrenal glands. Sorry, by those kidneys. So this comes out and goes over the pancreas. The pancreas would be down under it. These would come off and go behind the pancreas. So, right? And don't forget, I could ask you the diaphragm in any picture that it shows up. Probably not. This is a blood vessel thing, but we want you to know that's the diaphragm separating the chest from the abdomen. So now we get to the legs. But before we get there, clear the screen, scroll it up a little so you can see the right there, the external and internal. 
By the way, you can see it over here too. This isn't the best picture for it. It's not the worst, but it's not the best. But I would suggest you get a picture of it to help with you. We had to draw them in because they chose not to label them. But since you could see them, I felt like it was important for you guys to see, to know their names. This is the last artery picture, then we'll take a break. Okay, so ignore this little one for now. We're just going to focus on this big top part. Let me get it a little bigger for you. Just to the knee right of there. That'll work. What is that right there? Good, iliac crest, your hip bone, your iliac crest. Can't believe it, they did not label that. What is that? Oh, so this is the sacrum right here, but that blood vessel that blood vessel is the abdominal aorta. I should have said name that blood vessel. So right at the split, here and here, we have the common iliacs that you can see. Right here, the common iliac splits, and you get a little one going inside, and the main one stays right there. Let me use red instead on that main one. So this one will be red, and I made that little branch white so you could see the difference. Okay. Little white one. Here's your internal iliac artery. Notice the external is much thicker, and I stopped it right there on purpose. You can see this little, oops, wrong color. Get that out of there. Go back to the white pin. This little white cord right there. As soon as the external iliac crosses that, they rename it. So right here, it has a new name. And right here, it keeps that name. And right here, it keeps that name. All the way until here where it splits. So from right here, all the way down, that major blood vessel in your leg, that major artery is called the femoral artery. So it goes at the top. Abdominal aorta splits. We have the common iliacs. That goes a little bit and it splits. We get internal going towards the sacrum and we get external staying. So notice this, the common iliac, the external iliac and the femoral right here, they're really the same vessel. There's no difference. It didn't branch or anything off of that part. But every time they have a branch or it crosses something, they rename it. So that's what makes it kind of crazy, is there's not really as many blood vessels as you think. They just pick and choose when to name them and rename them. 
The reason we're doing only the basics is because it can get very confusing. Now, when the femoral right here splits, one of the branches goes right behind the knee. And hopefully you remember from AMP1, the fancy name for the space behind the knee was popliteal. So they call that artery behind the knee the popliteal artery. And so those are the only ones you need on the upper leg there. So go ahead and get your picture, and then we'll do the lower leg, and then we'll take a break. So I'm now showing you, and I think it's easier for you if I draw it than if I use the two pictures. The only view you'll see this one on the test would be from behind. Okay, this is the back. See the bottom of the foot here? There's the toe, that's the bottom. So this is the back of the leg. So that is, the femoral was coming down. It went to the back and behind the knee here, it's called the popliteal or popliteal. Popliteal what? So there we have it right there. As soon as it branches here, we have to rename it. We're looking at the back of the leg. So that means that this branch, since it disappeared, it went forward. This first branch here that goes it's going forward because we're looking at the back of the foot and leg. So that makes this anterior. And since this bone, the main bone here is the tibia, That is the anterior tibial artery. You know what happens as soon as a blood vessel branches, we rename the main part too. So the main little nub and the continuation, they keep the same name. So all the way down now, it's on the back of the bone. So what's a good name that means the back of that bone? Very good. Posterior. Posterior tibial arc. Now, in this view, it's very easy to see that there's a third one right here. You don't need to know it. Happens to be named for the other bone. What's the bone beside the tibia called? Fibula. So that's the fibular artery, but it won't be on the test. But that's what it is. So when you see in a little bit, when we come back and we do veins, there's going to be a fibular vein. We're not going to have you name it. Okay? The veins are going to be similar to this with one big issue. There's extra veins. There's quite a few extra veins down here. So we're going to have two extra ones that we're going to see that you might need to know the name for. Okay? Go ahead and get that picture because I do need, just realized, I need to show you the front because there's one blood vessel that I might show you on the bottom front that you can't see here.
So when I test you over this, I'm going to, over these, I'll show you the back. But remember, we had this picture that also where we could see the front. So look here. They, on this one, they ghosted it. That means it's behind. And right here, they finally made it come out. So that means it goes forward. That's the anterior. Where it's split, this is posterior. So that stays posterior. And there's a little third one over here coming out. That's the fibula. I won't ask you in this picture, okay? But what you may see on this picture and also on the veins is right here, when you get to the ankle, the one that goes to form that arch right there, that's called the dorsal pedis or dorsalis pedis artery. So I don't care if you call it dorsal pedis or if you use that whole name dorsalis, both are acceptable. But that's that little one that goes on the top side of your ankle and you get a little arch that leads to the toes that you can see there okay. over here you can see these labeled so let me just That one could be on either picture, but these will only be on that picture. So I highlighted them to show you where they might be asked on this. Those three over there, these two over here. I guess that one will. So go ahead and grab that picture. And let's see, 1238. Come back at 10 till, at 10 till one, and we'll start the vein. Veins will go a lot faster because at least half of them have the exact same name. So it's going to be really easy to get our bearings on the veins.